Hello everybody and welcome to another hobby cheating video. Today we're going to deep dive into a little bit different kind of flesh. Today we're going to talk about painting blue skin. Let's get into it. Uh, the strict technomancer that is Vinci V. Let us get to the technique and learn it Vinci V. GW is nice enough to send me the new Beast Lord. Now, I have a Beast of Chaos army and I think the beasts are super cool. I loved this new fig immediately upon seeing him. My Beasts of Chaos are all Zinch themed, and so they tend to have a lot of blue skin and that kind of color palette to them. And I thought, what a great chance to deep dive into how to make blue skin look compelling as flesh. This comes up a lot uh, in the Discord uh, for the Patreon, link below, uh, but it also just is a general question that comes up in my videos a lot. I see a lot of people try to paint blue skin and not give it the range, the depth, and the tonal variation it needs to really sell his skin. So today, we're going to get into that, show you how to really make it uh, be credible as blue skin, and have some fun along the way. Let's head over to the painting desk and get some paint on this bad boy. Let's start with the paints we're going to use today. We're going to use six paints to paint blue skin, and ironically, only two of them are actually blue at all. And the goal here is to create a nice spread. As I said, with skin, skin has a lot of different tones in it. And for us to recognize it as something alive, there needs to be the feeling of warmth, but there also needs to be travel. Skin is quite satin, so it's often highly reflective. Sweat, things like that make the light bounce quite strongly. So we really wanna make sure we're traveling a value scale. Now to start with, for our blue skin, I'm laying down this full base coat of fairly thin dark plum, which might sound strange, what the heck does this purple red have to do with blue skin? Well, the blue skin is very cold and even in its highlights, it will remain cold. So our initial colors here are going to drift into a little bit of warmth underneath to get that feeling of blood beneath the skin. I then reinstantiate all those really deep shadows by just mixing in a little bit of Payne's gray into that dark plum to really black line everything. This is for those occlusion shadows between items. Uh, or under very large muscle groupings, in between fingers, at the separation points between his leathers and armor, things like that. Most of all of this will be covered, but it's about setting the tone of what goes above it. Now we move to the beginning of the actual blue. And our goal here is effectively to cover, I would say about 95% of this surface with this. And here's an important tip. When you're laying down this first color, the deep purple will be our shadow color, but notice on the tops of the muscle structures there where they connect, I'm painting over that purple. This is how we avoid muscle islands. The tops, the upward facing recesses do not have deep shadows. Their shadow is your midtone, and the highlight is your highest highlight. I cannot repeat this enough times. And as I build up from here, we're gonna just use a lot of traditional layering, moving into the slightly brighter colors. But for most of these initial tones, I'm going to continue to connect the various muscle structures together. It won't be until I cross the midway point where I'm traveling above my, my mid-tone into the, the highlights. You can see there how I drew the two together, right? So it won't be until I cross over that point into the highlights where I start integrating that ice yellow that I start heating the individual muscle volumes on the top as well. We're respecting those deep shadows on the bottom because those are in shadow, they are away from the light. Now, as I start integrating in my ice yellow and the color gets uh, more and more bright, it's going to stay quite cold. Even though the yellow color is here, we're not really gonna add any warmth. The fact that we have blue as a base combined with the fact that ice yellow is usually a pretty cold color means our highlights for this are gonna stay pretty frigid and frozen. And oftentimes with blue skin, that's the impression we want. You can modify this by using other highlight colors, but in this case, I wanted a cold uh, sort of wasteland skin. And so we're gonna stick the whole thing cold, hence the importance of the warm, deep shadows. And I continue just layering shingles on a roof, covering less and less and less each time. And I do a lot of these steps with the highlight colors. 
This is really important. When you first start with your initial tones and you're working mostly in your darker tones and your mid-tones that are rather transparent, you can afford to go with a little bit bigger value jumps on the layers. It won't be as visible, especially from any distance outside of, you know, an inch away. But as you get into the more bright, the more high value colors, the colors where you have those uh, brighter tones integrated and mixed in, the opacity of your layers is suddenly going to jump. So you need to work thinner and you need to work in more layers. And here you can see as we're uh, coming up to my highest highlights, I'm touching almost nothing on the muscles. And I'm working now we're heating just the very edges of those volumes. This represents the very tip top of every muscle structure and effectively the sheen of the satin skin. Uh, and then I do this last step here, which is to glaze very lightly with that ice yellow. That's just another attempt to smooth out all of those transitions. So taking that highlight color, thinning it way down and applying a glaze over everything I highlighted. The exact tone I'm using for my highlight here isn't something you need to follow. Just like always, what I'm doing is not uh, baking. This isn't science. There's no exact recipe to follow. I have the paints listed, so if you want to follow it, you can. But of course, you could switch out many different tones for uh, this particular highlight. You could use something like a sunny skin tone. You could push into a, a slightly more pink infused tone if you wanted to add a little bit of light uh, pastel purple elements to the highlights. There's lots of choices here and I encourage you to experiment with different highlight colors. The key as always with flesh is to run that gamut, to have that wide spread, that true variation of hue that will make it credible as flesh. So now that we've layered up, it's time to smooth everything out. And those purple uh, shadows are a little too strong. So we're going to take some of our deep blue color, work it into a glaze, and we're gonna create a soft transition. We're gonna both tone that purple a little bit. We're, we're basically gonna cover all of it, except for the very tiniest, thinnest of lines. But we're going to really just smooth out that transition with these glazes. Moving again back up the value scale through my shadow tones and mid-tones and creating glazes to draw all of those layers together. This does more though than just smooth a blend. By having some of these thin glazes go over the areas that I had previously highlighted and previously brightened up and moved up the value scale, you get a different tone because this highly transparent paint is over top of a brighter color. But let's take a moment. I wanna focus in here. Your video didn't freeze. See this spot under his arm? Notice how much purple I left here? This is wrong. There is not that much deep shadow under his arm. I recognize this sort of off camera and I'm gonna come back in with a low blue mid-tone and cover over that. Only the under pointing uh, areas, only the things that actually point down should be that deep a shadow. And here is a point of fact, you can see it corrected and how much more realistic it looks. Now we're gonna glaze in some magenta, but of course over this blue skin, it's not going to read as pink in any way or magenta in any way. Instead, it's gonna give us the feeling of a rich purple tone, but much richer and more saturated and, and vibrant and vital than if we had used actual purple because we're gonna use it as a filter. This is an extremely thin glaze. Uh, and so the key here is to just work it into not just the shadow areas, but up onto the mid-tones as well to create not just value variation, but variation of hue, those subtle red tones that make skin feel like skin. In much that same vein on any of these sort of places where the skin would be stretched thin, so around his various joints, because he has these those extra backwards leg joints, because he's got hoof feet, uh, and around his knuckles, his lips, his nose, uh, his elbows, we're adding a little bit of old rose. Again, a soft pink tone, put in very thinly to make it feel like blood's near the surface. And then we'll glaze over that softly with some of that mid-tone blue, bringing life. 
there you go, that's the skin. I painted up the rest of him off camera. Let's go ahead and take a few shots of him now and we'll see how he came out. All in all, I think this guy was super fun to paint. I liked this model quite a bit and really enjoyed painting it up. He'll be a great uh, addition to my Beast's Army overall. Uh, if you liked this, hey, give it a like. It's so easy, just click that button down below. Subscribe for additional hobby cheating in the future. As mentioned before, we do have a Patreon here focused on review and feedback and taking your next step on your hobby journey. Uh, as always, I thank you so much for watching this one, and we'll see you next time.